Hello and welcome to our time. Hello. <laughs> what? Oh, okay. You're not supposed to talk in between. Oh, okay. We do that too often. Hey, you've just celebrated a big birthday. Oh, stop it. Was it? Yeah. And what and did you do to celebrate? I had a lovely party at home. You because, did? Yes, because my husband's having a birthday too. Um, You're not married to somebody else. <laughs> God, these my chances we are, gone. We're, no, we celebrated together. Which is I lovely. know I was there. It was a lovely, <laughs> lovely evening with your three boys, your yes. four boys including your husband. But that makes you think about your... Um... Well, so let me introduce our next guest, please. Oh, OK. Kimberly. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Welcome back Hi. to our Hello, time. Kimberly. We love having Kimberly on the program because we learn so much. And I just... Well, talking to you, we are just saying... When you sort of get to the age, well, you start to think of... Stop it. You just sort of... Well, I got to the stage where I was thinking, OK, I need to see my doctor and just sort a few things out or see if I need to have some tests done right. at this stage. Good. So we thought we'd, we'd sort of go down that path today. Sure. Um, so I How have, do we look I've, after ourselves as we get older? Well, look, at it's a good question. And I think when you do the big milestones, when people turn 50 or 60 or, or 70 or <laughs> naughty, <laughs> I think it makes people think, OK, I just, I'm just i doing OK. But I think people realise a lot of their friends are getting sick. And so, yeah, I really wanted to talk today about doing preventative things. Mm. So, you know, everyone talks about the food you can have and supplements, but there's also a real bridging between Western medicine that you can actually do some things as tests to see how you're travelling. So a lot of people wait till they get sick and then they make an appointment to see the doctor, mm. they get bad news, they then throw everything you know they need to financially and medically mm. at whatever's mm. wrong. So it's a bit late then really though, isn't it? It is. When there's some really good tests available now, so I really commend you that you know if men and women need different tests. Yeah. And I would really be be suggesting by age 50, 60, 70 onwards that you're really diligent with these at least once a year. I was going to say six months or 12 months, what would no, you recommend? No, look it depends on months. your state of health. If you're a healthy person and you're basically saying there's not really a lot wrong I would go once a year and I would do the basics. So it's important as a woman to have a breast exam, to have a smear but also to have a cholesterol and have your white cell count, your platelets, your haemoglobin, your iron, mm. your liver function. These are standard things your doctor will do. And that would just come in a regular blood test? It would. It? And it doesn't cost Medicare a lot of money, but what it does is it, is it blankets over a whole lot of things. So, for instance, if your iron came back low, immediately you would ask the question, are you a vegetarian? You know, do you not eat red meat? I had a patient in today with that, and they ate three times a week red meat, and yet their iron was very low. So immediately that takes you down a line of thinking, let's just do some stool samples, very simple tests that you can do. You can uh, be on a register for it, or you can buy them at the pharmacy that checks something called occult blood, and that is blood in your stools. Mm. Now. You could just maybe have an anal fissure or a hemorrhoid, or you could have something more sinister. But in that one little test that started from a simple mm. routine iron, it would mean that you would maybe even be diagnosed with a, a bowel cancer way before you ever had a symptom. Or it could be just simple polyps or something. It could be something really simple. Yeah, but it could we'll... just be... Yeah, off, but yeah. you know you can actually deal with it early yeah. and I'm into early intervention because often by the time you get a symptom the disease is fairly progressed yes. because so you know, it's been So by spreading. having something regular it also gives your GP a picture of your health over a longer Correct. period of time. And Doesn't I use that example particularly with men with things like their PSA level. So yeah. PSA is your prostate level and it's a blood test. It's not the rubber glove. Everyone's worried about that. But <laughs> for blokes that are worried... They do. You can they just, just put it I on. know, it they off. do. And so you can go and have a simple test and you have to know your number. That's my saying with all my men is know your number because it shouldn't move very much. So mm. you're, you will be assigned a number which will be a 2.1 or a 1.8. Mine's remain the same for... 
Well, since I've been having blood tests, I think. Correct. And you, you need to be comparing apples to apples. So mm. I had a gentleman in last week who was routinely a 2.1, a 2.1, and his next one was a 14. So yeah, that's, that's a considerable God, jump. Yes. And that was in a 12-month period. Right. So what then they... What happened well, well, you need so the when, other test. So, yes, then you do need the other, other test. test. Oh, okay. <laughs> but when you see a 14, you're probably quite happy to have the other test because yes. it's clearly mm. showing there's a problem. So we waited six weeks and it had gone up to 21. Wow. So this clearly told us that there was a disease in the prostate, yeah. but he could go down that road of early treatment yes. rather than thinking... It doesn't have to take your life in the end. That's Correct. the simple And the only it. reason we were checking was he was up twice a night to do a wee. Yeah. And that's very common. Over the age of 50, a lot of people are up two, three times that's a, a night. That's a sign of diabetes too, isn't it? It can be. And, you know, for it can everyone... also be. You should have gone before you went to bed. <laughs> that's right. I've had a bit too much wine before <laughs> bedtime. And it doesn't mean, now for everyone watching who gets up twice a night, that there's something sinister wrong. This is about knowing your body and yeah. knowing when something changes. Mm. And as soon as there's you, that change... You, you've just hit the nail on the head, actually. It's knowing your body. Correct. And... As we get older, you sort of, it's almost like a fear of not wanting to know your body. Do you mm. know what I mean? It's, it's like if you, feel, if you feel crook in simple terms, you can usually feel there's something wrong here or there's something wrong there or I've got a sure. mm. pain here or something mm. there. That's, as you say, that's sometimes too mm. late to go. It is. And I think people are more concerned. You know, first of all, because of the internet, we're more aware of disease. But, I, you know, we, we truly are getting sicker. You know, I, just speaking of that, I read a, a, an article in the paper, I think it was, with statistics regarding self-diagnosis from everything. Googling. Oh, Dr Google. And how, <laughs> I think it was an extraordinarily high 63%, I think, of mistakes were made by... Wrong interpretation. Yeah, mm. by self-diagnosis. It's not that hard to go to a doctor. No, it isn't. But by the same token, there's also some value from researching because sometimes you can know your body very well. And, you know, there's a lot of times you see a doctor, you don't get a lot of time. You know, there's a That's time true. restriction. And, you know, in our practice, we spend half an hour to an hour with someone. And I really believe in having those conversations and asking a lot of questions. The patient will often tell you what's wrong inadvertently. You've often said that, and, and I understand that. It's about time, though, isn't it's it? It's time spent, and if you spend enough time, they will give you a lot of answers, mm. which becomes a picture. See, our body is a, is a whole, and unfortunately, medicine has gone you into systems. You mean a systems. whole, all over, not... It's a whole system, and so, unfortunately, our mainstream medicine, or Western medicine, has itemised it. So you see a neurologist through your nerves, and you see an endocrinologist mm. for glands, and you see there's nothing wrong with that because there's specialities, but our our body also function as a whole and so sometimes you need someone to take a step back and piece together the PSA with the symptoms with the cholesterol with the you know with all these symptoms and sometimes it takes a while to do that but also too we spoke about this before if you're not happy you think that there is something else, you get a second opinion. Sure. And, you know, if you're buying a car, you don't go to one car yard mm. and just pick the first car that's there. You know, I firmly believe you know when someone speaks truth to you. And many times I've left any kind of practitioner and office and gone, I just don't feel like that was right. Mm. Try again. Try again. Is it just the yeah. pressure on the system, though, Kimberly? Sure. Um, sometimes, and the inability to express what you really feel or where the pain is or where the whatever is? It's, it's education. A lot of people don't know. They don't know how to look after their children when they get really sick. I just did a recent stint at um, the children's hospital and the waiting room was full, but with a lot of children that actually weren't that sick. But yeah. the parents didn't know how to manage the temperature, the fever. Some of them just need a Panadol yeah. and someone to jump into bed next to them and keep yeah. an eye on them and keep them cool all night. So there's a lot of fear around when people get sick. They'll rush to their doctor, they'll mm. do the Google. So I think more education, so you know, in schools and in seeing natural therapists and talking to making sure you have a relationship with your doctor. Yeah. 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 I have a lot of patients that won't tell me really what's going on until the third or fourth one, particularly men. They tend to be a lot shyer about symptoms, so they'll get to know me, and by the third or fourth consult, they'll bring up about the prostate or the oh. sex drive or the something, and it's just about 
friendship and relationship and feeling comfortable sure. with the practitioner that you see. I yeah. suppose it's like coming into anybody who's a professional at what they do. Mm. A lot of the guests we have on the program prior to doing the program are very nervous, aren't they? Absolutely. And it is like going to a doctor's waiting room because you don't know what's going to happen. There's <laughs> all these extra people around looking at you. You get white coat blood pressure, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I don't personally, but, oh, I do if I've had to go in for an operation or something, mm. you know, just Talk, 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 talk. Because that's my way of coping. No, who would have thought? No, you can't believe it. But that's my way of coping with the situation. Is that right? I'm not going to say any more. We know you very well now. (laughs) But it is, it's very important though, we would like to stress that um, you do this once a year, it doesn't take much, um, just once a year to go and have a, a blood test or a talk, just a talk with your doctor, just to reassure yourself that everything is going smoothly. Blood Terrific. pressure, blood test, mm. what else? Yeah. So um, all your basics. Your GP will have, if you say, I want a standard checkup. there is a standard amount of things that they will check. But One in of simple them, terms, it's just ask, isn't it? It's just ask. And the biggest thing is a, an FBC, which is a full blood uh, yeah. collection. So they will actually just check over your basics of mm. your blood, a physical, you know, they can set eyes on you. You know, sometimes we'll even pick up a tremor with someone or mm. say, what's that about? Just setting eyes on someone who maybe you're not, you're used to that symptom, but the mm. doctor can see that there's something not right. Well, Again, Kimberly, we love having you on the program. Thank you again. Thank and you very much. coming up in just a moment after this next break, we have Alex and Jim Patterson, who are part of The Borderers with some great music, including a song about Ned Kelly. Stay with us on our time. And welcome back to our time. And a very special welcome to Denise, who prefers to be called Alex, Alexander, and Jim Patterson, who both make up together with a few other people a band called The Borderers. Welcome to our time. Thank you. Thank you. I love your music. I love your energy. This man jumps around like the guitar is put up the wrong end in the wrong place (laughs) Mm. at times. Mm. But so entertaining. Your personality and your charm just makes everybody want to feel what you're feeling. Is there an answer to that? That's rude. No, whatsoever. <laughs> Depends no, what you're feeling. In all seriousness, though, you make great music, but it isn't... Uh, the music that you make is so diverse because your backgrounds are from elsewhere. So we'll start with you, Jim. How did you end up playing in Australia? Yeah, well, I'm from Glasgow, Scotland. and um, so I'd never have guessed. You couldn't have guessed there. Oh. And I was uh, on a round-the-world trip. And I'd met a guy in, in America who was from Adelaide. So after being in Perth for a few months, I stopped off in Adelaide during the fringe time, oh, yes. thinking Adelaide... Because the Adelaide fringe is when all that happens, isn't it? Well, when I just thought Adelaide, Adelaide was like that all the time. And I thought, wow, this is a great place. You should move here. Yeah. And after a week here, I'd heard there was a band in the recording studio and uh, somebody said, come down to the studio. And uh, it was The Borders and Alex was in it. And then I just decided to stay after that. And your background was? Uh, Northern Ireland, Belfast. And I, I was, again, backpacking too, and it was a bit but earlier on you started on the earlier pace. than him? Yeah, mm-hmm. ni- 1987 I came to Australia. Oh, OK. Yeah. So, yeah, and I just thought I, I was... I actually um, was in Perth initially, and I got in the back of a motorbike and came across <laughs> <laughs> came across to Adelaide. And what, across, on the Nullarbor plane? On the Nullarbor plane. On the motorbike? With, yeah, with a guy who Good was gracious. a friend of a friend of a friend. Of course. And by the time I was meant to go to Townsville in Queensland, and by the time I got there, um, I was sick of him and I said, <laughs> Adelaide seems like a really nice place. <laughs> I'll stay and here. And then you met him? Yeah, uh, years later, yeah, six now, years later. what's interesting, though, both of you are full-time musicians. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of people don't sort of realise that you can make a living out of being a musician. And yeah. you always have, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, we have, we have. And you also teach. Um, I don't know. I don't teach, um, but I am in a children's show oh, yeah, called sorry. Ticklish All Sorts, and right. um, yeah, we do other, other kind of stuff as well. And that's an interesting thing too, because mm. you sort of got the best of both worlds, working to all age groups. Oh, I mean that's what we love because we play at the festivals, and yeah. there's a there's a really big family audience, you know, there, and that's it's, true. It's, yes, it's Often really enjoyable that. actually. Yeah, really enjoyable. So the music that you play. How would you describe it? Because it's such an interesting mix. Well, people always say Celtic, but I think it's because we're from Scotland and Ireland, but we're influenced uh, by so many diverse styles, you know, Tex-Mex, African. We've even worked with Indian singers, you know. 
So you, you can't call it world music either because it's just, well, we, we just like to entertain. Mm. But it's very, but you've developed sort of quite a unique way of performing that, that really does grab an audience and well, you just we, can't help but enjoy it. Yeah, we, we want to be known as entertainers rather than be stylized in yes. one, yeah. one specific... And you truly are entertainers. You, yeah. It's more than watching a band in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the, the guys like Eric Bogle or Colin Hay, they, they can entertain the audience by what they say between the songs, so that's just a big part of it as well. But you do that as well. Yeah, yeah. so... It's a nice yeah. chat. We actually like to make the, the contact with the audience. That's the main thing. And then I think once you make the contact, you can then get them involved as you go along. And but are your audiences from your... Um, backgrounds? Not necessarily. They're just anywhere, no. aren't they? No. I mean, especially at festivals. I mean, you get people who are just music lovers that come along and they're open to seeing all kinds of styles, you know. And you travel quite a bit. Yeah, well, we played yeah. in, in Scotland uh, last year. Oh, we played in Latvia as well <laughs> and Denmark. Yes, you do, yeah. Yeah, Latvia. Yeah, that was interesting. Great place, great food. Um, but we played in Scotland and realised how great a crowd they are when they like you, if yeah. they hate you. You know, but they take a wee while to warm up too, you know. Like no, no, it, was like it takes after, six pints after, before they warm after up. After the beer, that was, that's when they warmed up and then they were dancing on the tables. <laughs> but is that because of the infection of the beat of your music? I mean, it's sort of a corny thing to say, I guess. But I think well, that in, in Scotland the, the and Ireland... Root, the, yes, the roots of your lineage background, You have whatever. to really enjoy yourself when you're out because yeah. life's yeah. so hard yeah. that yeah. when they go out, they're going to have a great time. Do you know, I've yeah. never got that before. You've just made that make perfect yeah, sense yeah. as to why you really do grab people and they just want to do yeah. this with you. Yeah. Not in a squeaky chair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that Scottish gig, you know, we, at the end of it, everybody was on each other's shoulders and wandering around the pub. You know, we've never had that in Australia, really, but uh, it's been close to that. Yeah, the few of the festivals that we play at, say Port Ferry or even actually Fairbridge, do you remember the last time? In Western Australia, we got oh, okay. um, a, quite a unique, they have a very young audience that goes to that and they've been trying to um, encourage that over the last few years. And we had all these kind of 18 and 19, 20 year olds in the front, in the marsh not pit. Not drinking, doing no, just, just music lovers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I the get energy that. was fantastic. Uh, yeah, we loved their energy. It, it was sort but of. That's the truth. It's the energy the performer puts out that if you do it right, you get the same energy back. Well, that's, that's yeah. what you hope for. That You know, you try to, try to just uh, give the best that you can every time you perform, and just hopefully that's infectious. And well, I just keep thinking he must have a big stock of the. The you know the zappy drinks. There's <laughs> no, no. Red Bull dropping. Red no, Bull no. I'm more on the green juice, more okay. like that. Yeah, I'll be Nutribullet. Oh, I can't advertise on the show, can we? No. <laughs> no, I never use a Nutribullet. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the, again, the energy is just wonderful. So, um, and you brought up an interesting point with the age group too, because to me, what you do is quite an ageless performance. Mm. It, it can work. Well, we did a one gig where the youngest was three and the oldest was 103, and then we're both doing the same thing. Yeah, yeah, that's. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they both soiled themselves. Not wasn't that. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, we did it. We did a show recently in Canberra that was a multicultural festival, and I mean that was really unique. And not only did you have all age groups, but you had all nationalities. Yes. I've All seen you working costumes. in that situation, yeah. Oh, it's, it's absolutely fantastic, mm. you know, the really, really lovely energy. It's just great to have you on the program. Now, you're going to do a number for us in a moment, yep. which is fantastic, but it's not just the two of you. No, no. We've, got, we've got our friend Steve Fleming with us. Okay, but in, and you augment yourself quite often, don't you, to more than just the two of you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but we're off to do, we're doing a cruise soon. We're performing on a cruise ship and there's yep. a country music cruise and so we can't bring any of our own musicians but we're working with uh, Sydney musicians. With the other, the guys on the cruise. And yeah, that's okay. what we do all over the world. We just pick yep. up musicians but you can't get anybody better than Steve. And, yeah. and Steve's but, actually from Glasgow as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. So uh, the family. he's got that, he's part of that, yes. <laughs> Yeah. Enjoy yourself because life's so tough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. that. yeah, he's got that as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much, Alex and Jim. And they're going to be back after the break with Steve Fleming, the Borderers, performing a song about Ned Kelly called Ned Kelly, Such Is Life. And now, Janice, here's the music we've all been waiting for with uh, magical Steve in the background. 
Welcome to our time. Thank you very much, Malcolm. <laughs> it's a pleasure to have you here. The song is... Ned Kelly, Such Is Life. The Borders. Is it too much to ask for a mother to see her own flesh and blood? One more time, hear my plea. I feel it in my bones that his last days are near. Oh, what will become of my son? What just he bought? Australia's rebel child, the marches of society, it is trouble to survive. Ned Kelly grew up wild, but treatment, persecution plagued the Kelly family. But Ned was not the monster they made him out to be. And though he never claimed to have led a blameless life, he was hounded like a dog. Just by me, declared, Lord, have mercy on your soul. No more you'll flaunt the law. So change life, Ned replied, well, I'll see you when I go. When you reach the great beyond, then God above will judge us all. And they will say, say, say who was right or wrong. Oh. Oh. Shall be your such as life. Spread the Kelly Cole across the Murray River and into New South Wales, where the price upon his head. I get you real to was such an easy game. And when they reached Glen Rowan, the traps were on the tail. But someone could have saved him and washed in no avail. He was sold in Melbourne jail. Judge Barry declared, Lord, have mercy on your soul. No more you flow the law. Such is life. Me. You disregard the laws of our fine society. No longer will you be free to be Japan and Mary Thieves. To the gallows you must go. The crimes that I am accused of were done in self defense. Your sentence doesn't bother me. I hope no fear of that. I'm a man of rebel till I draw my last breath. I hold my Fantastic. Such is life. Thank you. Thank, oh, you. thank you. Amazing. Come on up, Jim. <laughs> Come in, Steve. Okay, oh, we're in. all here together. Who wrote that? We did. It's a great I song. I just slipped that. Why are you puffing? <laughs> <laughs> puffing Billy. Exactly. <laughs> Jesus, my name. Puffing no, Jimmy. you wrote this recently. Yes, we did. Yeah, it's yeah, a great yeah. song. Fantastic to have a group like you doing Australian stuff, not just... Yeah. Look, the music of your birth. Well, he yeah. was he was Irish after all. <laughs> oh, that's true. Yes, exactly. Well, we'd love to see you soon on our time next time. So remember, keep yourself nice till then. Thank Bye for you. now. Bye-bye. <laughs> Five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> <laughs>